Okay, good. You can start now. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, yes, sure. And uh, so, can you can you see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Please go on. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, just let me start my my watch. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so first of all, thanks to the organizer for this invitation and also for taking the initiative of starting such a uh, nice seminar series, which I think it's quite useful given uh, the uh, ongoing pandemic. So today I'm going to, to tell you about uh, a work that uh, myself with this collaborator that you can see listed on this slide. Can you see my cursor? Probably not, right? No? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, I, I'll try to, to live without that. Uh, yeah, so this is a work that um, uh, we have been um, working on when the second data uh, release of the Isagaya space mission came out, and uh, it's about the first volume limited sample of cataclysmic variables. Uh, so this is the outline of the talk. So really don't worry if you don't know about these systems. I will start with a general introduction about them, about their evolution. I will then present our results and I will put them in the context uh, of the current model uh, of compact binary uh, evolution. So starting from the basics, uh, cataclysmic variables are compact interacting binaries in which uh, we have uh, a white dwarf, which is a lay type star. So this uh, later star is in contact with its Roche lobe and is losing matter through the inner Lagrangian point, which is then accreted onto the white dwarf, typically with the formation of an accretion disk. And uh, the systems are quite compact. They have orbital period in the range between 80 minutes up to two days. And he here you can see uh, uh, the range that they span in uh, orbital separation, which is comparable to that uh, of the solar radius. And just to give you also a full overview, uh, I'm gonna show you how these objects looks like from the spectroscopic point of view. So here you have the spectral energy distribution of a cataclysmic variable. On the top panel, you have the ultraviolet from the Hubble Space Telescope, then the optical and the near infrared uh, from uh, X shooter at the very large telescope. And uh, also oh, I would like you to, to mm, pay attention to the different scale on the y-axis. So what we see here are the different uh, sources uh, of emission in the system. So first of all, we see uh, the white dwarf. And uh, the white dwarf, uh, they, they are hot, their temperature is set uh, by the compressional heating of the accretion material. So they have uh, typically temperature higher than 10,000 K and then uh, their emission dominates in the ultraviolet, as you can see in the, in the top panel. And uh, you can recognize the presence of the white dwarf from this broad Lyman alpha absorption feature and the bulk series uh, in the optical. Also, uh, we can see the contribution from the accretion disk, which have uh, temperature typically of uh, 6,000 K, in some cases up to 10,000, and they mainly dominates in the optical. And their main signature are these uh, emission lines, which are broadened by a uh, decaplanar velocity distribution of the material in the disk. And finally, here you can see the best fitting model for the donor star in the system and uh, donor star in CFE, as, as I told you, they are typically cold and they mainly contribute in the near infrared. So um, as you can see here, uh, we have um, atmosphere model that we can use uh, to fit the stellar component in the system. So we are able to reproduce the observed spectral energy distribution and we can get the parameters of the system. And that's the reason why cataclysmic variables are important because we have access to both stellar components. We have the models to derive the physical properties. And since they are numerous, they are nearby, they are relatively bright. We have the tools to obtain uh, these physical parameters for large sample of object. So in CVs, we can really build the observational framework against which we can constrain the model um, describing the revolution, which are the same model describing the evolution of all types of binary. And so CVs are the ideal laboratory for this type, uh, for this kind uh, of studies. Uh, okay, then we can have a look very quickly how oh, these systems uh, evolve. So as that, uh, uh, as every type of binary, 
the evolution of CVs is driven by orbital angular momentum losses, and we mainly have two mechanisms, so either magnetic with bracking or gravitational uh, wave radiation. And as the system loses orbital angular momentum, it shrinks, so its orbital separation decreases, its orbital period decreases, and the system evolves from long to short orbital period. And at the same time, also the donor evolves because it's stripped of uh, more and more mass. So in long period system, typically we have uh, early M uh, uh, dwarfs. Uh, and then uh, as they are stripped of more and more mass, they uh, later on become late uh, M dwarf and finally become white dwarf, sorry, brown dwarfs. Uh, so CVs with brown dwarf donors are uh, the oldest component of the population of cataclysmic variables. Uh, so this is uh, the theory behind their evolution. Here you have some references if you, if you want to go into more details. But what I would like to discuss now is how the prediction of this model compared to the observation. And in particular, I will focus on these three subjects. So uh, starting from the mass distribution of uh, accreting white dwarf, what we uh, expect is that uh, the, the mass of white dwarf in CVs should be lower than 0 0.6, 0 0.5 solar masses. And this is due to the combination of two, two facts. So the first one is that CVs descend from, uh, um, from a phase uh, from binaries that underwent a phase of common envelope. So the inset of the common envelope phase will basically alt uh, the, the grow of the core that will later become the white dwarf. And also on top of that, we have that uh, once you form the cataclysmic variable, uh, the, uh, the layer of accreted material is unstable and it will go periodically uh, through uh, a classical nova eruptions. So these are just the thermonuclear ignition of the material accreted at the white dwarf surface which get uh, ejected in the surrounding space. And here you have just an artistic impression of uh, how this would look like. Uh, and uh, so the, uh, the nova eruption will basically prevent the white dwarf from, um, from efficiently retaining uh, the accreted mass. And therefore they should, although they are accreting it, they are not able to retain the mass, so they will not grow. So this is the, uh, the theoretical prediction, but once we go to the observation, what we see is, uh, is actually different. So we find that the average mass of CV white dwarf is significantly higher than predicted by the theory. And as you can easily imagine, this discrepancy is quite important and we need to understand uh, why we find this difference in order also to unveil the potential of cataclysmic variables uh, as uh, possible uh, type 1a supernova progenitors. Uh, the second uh, parameter that I would like to discuss is the space density uh, or, of cataclysmic variables. So here you have uh, a comparison between the e theoretical values in comparison with uh, observational results. And as you can see, the observational results are um, systematically lower than the value that are derived from the theory. So we are talking about of a difference of a factor of four up to two order uh, of magnitude. Uh, and again, to put this into a wider context, uh, understanding this is important because we need to, uh, with the space density, we are able to constrain the efficiency of the common envelope. So to understand also that in the phase of formation of CVs, uh, understanding the phase of common envelope, which also find application uh, in the evolution and formation of uh, all compact binaries. And finally, uh, the last point uh, I want to have a look at uh, is the fraction of old CVs with brown dwarf companion. So if we look at the theoretical prediction, we expect uh, uh, a large fraction of CV, CVs to have evolved, uh, to be old, and to have brown dwarf companion. But uh, actually the observation gives us a, a much lower fraction. And indeed, there, there is only a handful of CVs uh, with brown dwarf donors that have been discovered so far. So here you have some references, but there are a few more in the literature. And here I'm just showing QZ lib for which we identify the presence of the brown dwarf uh, from uh, its uh, egg shooter spectrum. So uh, again, here we have another major discrepancy which we need to, to solve in order to be able to understand uh, both the response of the donor to the mass loss process, but also the evolutionary timescales of the system. Uh, 
So to summarize this first part, uh, we have a few long-standing problems uh, between the theory and the observation. And uh, we have only two ways out of these problems. So the first one is that either there are observational biases playing a role, uh, and the second option is that uh, the models, maybe they are incomplete, uh, and they are missing uh, something. Uh, and this brings to, uh, to basically what I want this to discuss today, which is uh, the Gaia revolution. So the fact that Gaia in 2018 provided us with a 3D map of the galaxy, so provided us uh, with uh, position, um, parallaxes, uh, proper motions and colors for more than one billion stars in the galaxy. So Gaia provided us the tool to finally build volume limited sample of such star that we can use to finally have a look at the intrinsic property of the, of the population uh, of cataclysmic variables. Uh, so this is what uh, we have done. And our starting point uh, was um, basically creating a catalog uh, of cataclysmic variables because um, we didn't have one. So in the past, there have been few catalogs uh, of cataclysmic variables that have been compiled uh, but they stopped either back in 2015 or uh, in 2006. Uh, so we were really missing a catalog collecting all known CVs and CV candidates. And just to give you a number, there are on average four new CVs that are discovered per week, mainly by the transient survey, but uh, also there, they are discovered also uh, thanks to their uh, blue colors. Uh, so I have to say that this work wouldn't have been possible without uh, the huge effort by Elmet Breed in Cambridge. So Elmet did an amazing job over the years collecting all known CVs and CV candidates. Uh, she, uh, she kept track of all the new discovery and she put together this uh, amazing list of 8,000 objects. And thanks to this list, we could perform the cross match uh, with the, uh, the data from Gaia Dear 2 and built the first volume limited sample of CVs, which is composed of 42 systems within 150 parsec, uh, and for which we could estimate that it's 77% complete. So I'm going very quick in this stage, but I have to say that going from the catalog to, to the volume limited sample it was more difficult uh, than uh, maybe you can see from these two slides because there were lots uh, of contaminants, but uh, I don't have the time to go through that. Uh, and uh, you, you can find more details uh, in this work. And in this figure, you can see uh, the position of the system in the HR diagram. And I want also to, to, to point out these two papers, which are very nice because uh, they tell you how you can infer the properties of CVs according to the position in the HR diagram. Uh, and also they can tell you how we can use Gaia to, to learn about the properties of um, of all binaries in which we have a wide dwarf and what we can do even uh, with the upcoming release and how to expand uh, this volume. So thanks to Gaia, we uh, finally built this volume limited sample of CVs and we could use it to, uh, to derive the intrinsic properties of the galactic population of uh, these stars. And uh, the first results that uh, we obtain is that um, a fraction, an important fraction of CVs contain a magnetic white dwarf. And this is, first of all, quite uh, important because uh, previous estimates from magnitude limited sample um, estimated about 20-25% of magnetic system. So we can now say that this fraction is uh, about 36%. Uh, uh, and this is important because the system um, were not included in the evolutionary model. This has only been done recently, thanks to this work by Diogo Belloni in 2020, which finally takes into account of this last large fraction uh, of system. And also this fraction, it's uh, important because it's quite puzzling, because we don't, uh, we don't see uh, this high incidence of magnetism uh, reflected in the population of the detached progenitors uh, of cataclysmic variable. So this is uh, another open question related to uh, the formation of the system. Uh, but yeah, let me go back to the, um, uh, the, to the long-standing prog problem that I mentioned before. And indeed, uh, what we did was to have a look at the mass distribution of uh, the CV white dwarf within 150 parsec. And what we found is that the average mass is still 0 0.8. So uh, 
we confirm previous observational results and we found that they are indeed more massive than predicted by the theory. Uh, but uh, the big advantage of having a volume limited sample of object is of course that we can go and measure the space density and uh, indeed we derive a space density of 4.8 uh, 10 to minus 6 system per cubic parsec uh, and you can see here these results in comparison with previous uh, observation and the theoretical prediction and you can see that thanks to Gaia uh, we could basically reduce the uncertainty related to this measurement by a factor of 10. Uh, and also, uh, we again confirm that space density observed is lower than uh, the theoretical uh, predictions. Uh, and also, finally, once we go and look at the composition of the, the population and uh, we, we, we look how many CVs with brown dwarf donors are in this, uh, uh, in this volume, we find uh, a small fraction, so 7 up to 14%, which is quite far from the theoretical prediction of 40 up to, um, to 70. Uh, so if we wrap up, we can see that the long-standing problems are still there. So, but the big advantage of having studied uh, a volume limited sample of object is that uh, we can finally say, okay, these are not observational biases. We, ca we can rule them out. Uh, so the, the results from our um, volume limited sample of system is telling us that actually uh, this is, uh, the, mm, the evolutionary models are incomplete. So the evolutionary models are missing something related to uh, the evolution of these binaries. And uh, one possible solution, uh, it's an idea that has been suggested in the last few years, uh, uh, both by Schreiber et al in 2016 and also Nelemans et al, uh, always in 2016, but a slightly different uh, recipe. And the idea is very simple. So the idea is that there is an additional source of angular momentum loss which is called consequential angular momentum loss because it, it derives from the mass transfer process itself. Uh, and this ECAM, uh, it's a mechanism that is more efficient, uh, the lower is the mass of the Y dwarf. So the idea is that very few systems will survive in this mass range between zero and 0 0.5 solar masses, because uh, in this binary, the, the Y dwarf would merge with, it, with its uh, companion star uh, and they will become mm, a single object and will disappear from the population. So, and once you get rid of the system of thin low mass white dwarf, this would naturally explain why your observed mass distribution is peak at a higher mass than predicted by, uh, by the theory. Uh, and what's beautiful also about the ECAM is that without any additional fine tuning is also able to reproduce the observed space density. So here you can see the observed space density as um, comes from the ECAM prediction, which is in a very nice uh, agreement with the results uh, that we derived from the 150 parsec uh, sample. Um, unfortunately, however, when we go and look at uh, the fraction of CVs with brown dwarf companion, uh, we find that ECAM is still not able to solve this problem. So uh, ECAM still predicts uh, that a large fraction of CVs should be old with brown dwarf companion, but we do not find this uh, in our volume limited sample of object. Uh, so, uh, from the result of this 150 parts example, we could conclude that the current model uh, are incomplete, that there is a missing ingredient, uh, and the ECAM uh, prescription seems to be working quite well because it provides a nice explanation on why CV white dwarf should be uh, more massive than predicted by standard models. Uh, without any additional fine tuning is able to reproduce the space density and also other observational properties of the population, which I don't have the time to discuss. And also in, uh, in the work of uh, Diogo, uh, 2020 Belloni et al., you can also see that it also includes uh, the evolution, uh, the magnetic system. So it seems like everything is taking shape, uh, but however, we are still far from understanding uh, the disagreement between uh, the uh, observation and predict fraction uh, of old um, uh, CVs with brown dwarf companion. Uh, and of course, one of the other questions that remains open that you probably were also wondering about, uh, what's the origin behind this uh, mechanism? Uh, so uh, we don't have an answer yet, but one of the 
suggestion is that uh, um, this mechanism could arise from the nova shell uh, erup from, from the nova eruptions uh, and would arise from the friction that uh, the donor uh, between the donor uh, and the shell of ejected material um, and this would uh, be more efficient the lower is the mass of the white dwarf because uh, in this system the shell would have lower expansion velocity so this is a possibility, but however, we do not know too much about this physical process. So it's very difficult to say if uh, this is actually what's uh, going on. And so this was my uh, last, last uh, slide. I will leave here my summary and uh, I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Very nice talk again. Um, do we have questions? Um, I, I see there is already a question, but um, I think it seems like you answered the question already. But the question was from Matthew Templeton saying, um, is part of the issue simply that we haven't identified all the CVs? As an example, uh, WZ Sagittarius stars are infrequent outbursters and faint. We may see them in outbursts only via transient searches with faint limits. Um, and I think yeah, you answered. Well, um, maybe not completely. So, um, yes, yeah, so that could be an issue, but um, we are, uh, so I have estimated that uh, the, the sample is 77% complete. So we are talking about 12 up to 20 CVs that we are missing within 150 parsec. And these are indeed systems showing very low variability. So indeed WZ subjective, but also polars or nova like. So system that, um, uh, are not usually found uh, as trans transient. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, even if we assume that all the missing CVs are uh, WZ Sagitti or uh, CVs with this brown dwarf companion, we are still far from making up uh, to, to the prediction from the theory. So that would not solve the problem. Um, all right, and then um, we have another question from Stuart Littlefair asking, what are the reasonable expectations for what a CV with an orbital period of 95 minutes and a brown dwarf donor will look like? Because all the examples that we know are much younger or have shorter periods. Uh, I, I think we actually know a few of them. So for example, QZ Lib has a period of 92 minutes. So this is how a period yeah, it's period bouncer for the expert CV with brown dwarf donor would look like at uh, 90 minutes. Uh, and I think one of the problem in identifying this system is that, uh, so I think from the observation, we see that the systems are actually creating at higher mass accretion rate than we would expect from the theory. So they would look like something like that. And maybe we are looking in the wrong place. So I'm trying to identify them from the wrong spectral appearance. Okay, then we have a question from uh, Solem Bauman, who's going to ask herself the question. Okay, let's see. Do you hear me if I unmute? Yes, we can yes, hear you. Uh, okay, hi, Anna. Uh, I just wanted to make a, a little comment here. And, and, and I had one question though. Uh, you had 42 uh, systems, and then when you were ca calculating the mass on your slides, you had 14 white dwarfs, or 14 systems, right? Is, is, is that uh, what happened in between? I didn't understand. Maybe you might want to comment on that. Okay. And, and then I have a slight uh, comment on, on the x-rays you might want to, uh, in, perhaps difficult in, to incorporate that into your talk, but I do have, I've given a lot of talks and I have a review paper on advective hot flows on the x-rays, uh, involving the x-rays that you see predominantly in the x-rays that sort of explains some of these behaviors that you're seeing. And that's, I mean, uh, it's too long to explain here perhaps, but might explain you the stagnation of systems while in the period problem, the, the why you don't find perhaps, to my explanation perhaps in the mind, at least I can just say that to my explanation, uh, involving the x-ray emission uh, that you may not see all these brown dwarfs that you're looking for because they don't exist. They don't need to exist because there can be a CV graveyard and no uh, one to actually return. Now, okay, this, is, this was an explanation in my paper that I wanted to make a comment on. And x-rays, 
allow you for an interpretation in this manner. I just wanted to make a note. You don't um, seem to involve uh, any uh, part of any extra emission here. It's your op optical talk. But there are some explanations. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank uh, you for the nice talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think I can comment on both. So regarding the mass, um, so we selected the sample, but we didn't measure the masses. So the 14 masses that I show, they come from the literature. But I can tell you that we are uh, pushing this further because uh, I'm now measuring masses from the ultraviolet uh, and I already have seven masses more within 150 parsec. And the average mass, uh, nonetheless, it doesn't change. It's still there, it's 0 0.8 yeah. solar masses. And regarding period bouncers, mm. uh, this, this series with a uh, brown dwarf companion, uh, I, I think it's possible that the, there aren't so many around because, as I said, we see that they are accreting at much higher uh, accretion rate than, than we expect. So uh, it's possible that they are evol evolving mu much faster than the models predict, and then they will become to uh, a detached phase much quicker than we expect, and then they will just disappear as CPs. So uh, I, I think that that could be, that's possible. Okay, I, I think we can stop here now. Uh, I will also stop recording and um, um...